Okay, so we talked about trench warfare <clears throat> and how it, the, this war turned into a stalemate. Well, a lot of that was because uh, the, both sides built trenches uh, to defend themselves uh, so that they wouldn't be killed. Uh, but these trenches created a problem. Oftentimes, I mean, if you're in a trench, when it rains, the water collects in the bottom of the trench. So uh, not only are you outside all the time, it gets wet, it gets muddy, um, it's not very clean, there's mice running around, um, and so it's not a very pleasant experience. And then some of the new technologies made a land warfare even more deadly than it was before, like say during the Civil War. You had new inventions like machine guns. Um, people were able to harness poisonous gas like mustard gas and chlorine and use that on their enemies. And then uh, towards the end of World War I, uh, you get the development of tanks. And so that all makes this land warfare even more deadly than the Civil War. Uh, in the air, this is the first war where airplanes are used. Uh, remember that the airplane was invented in 1903. Uh, it is now 1914 and they were used for the first time on a large scale during a war here in World War I. Uh, they fired down on soldiers in the trenches at first. Um, they were used to scout where the enemy's positions were. Uh, and then eventually they started fighting each other in the air. Uh, and these battles between airplanes became known as dogfights. And then uh, on the sea, we have uh, submarines uh, used extensively. In Germany, um, they use what were called U-boats, or uh, those are just German submarines. Uh, U-boat actually stands for undersea booten. And so the U is just short for undersea booten, which just means underwater boat. Uh, and these German submarines would uh, launch torpedoes against Allied supply ships without the supply ships even knowing that they were there. And there was heavy fighting in the Atlantic Ocean and North Sea because of this. Uh, bigger battleships and uh, even the first aircraft carriers were built during World War I. Well, let's take a look at a couple pictures here before we uh, wrap up Section 1. Uh, here you can see an artist drawing of a trench. You can see a tank in the distance, you can see airplanes flying over. Uh, these little holes here are from the large artillery guns that would bombard the trenches. Uh, and then the soldiers would be asked to, uh, at the blow of a whistle, would be asked to climb out of these ditches, rush through the barbed wire, and attack the enemy on the other side. Uh, the barbed wire was here to slow down the enemy. Uh, you can see this soldier right here is looking through almost like a periscope type of a uh, contraption so he can see over the top of the, the trench. Um, so a very different type of warfare than uh, had ever been fought before. Whoops, we'll go back. We don't want that one. Whoopsie. Okay. Uh, this is actual photographs of people in the trenches. And you can see they were built deep enough so that you could stand up without having to worry about being shot. Uh, you can see the car the, the wood used on the on the bottom to keep the from being so muddy on the on the ground. So underneath there is where all the water would drain and, and the dirt would take that up. This would uh, give you some place to kind of walk. You can see in action here, there's a artillery bomb that hit just right near where this trench is located. This is the use of poison gas. Uh, soldiers had to have gas masks around their neck because of the possibility of poison gas attacks. And then these are different tanks. Three of the four tanks, this tank, that one, and that one are all allied tanks. And then the one you see here in the bottom left-hand corner, that's an that's uh, a central power tank, a German tank. Some of the airplanes used during the time, you can see the uh, barrage balloons, as they were called. We'll talk about those a little bit more in class. Uh, the biplanes uh, and other planes used. And then, of course, the U-boats. Uh, you can see what the U-boats look like. This one kind of, uh, I think this one's kind of neat because it shows, it shows a kind of a cutout uh, inside of a German submarine. Uh, and what the different places would be. 
So kind of interesting. So there we have uh, the different technology of World War One. When we come back and talk about our next uh, subject, we're going to talk about the uh, how the United States gets drawn into war during World War One because the United States doesn't start in this war right away. Thank you very much. Make sure you get the notes done.